Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the filter component. Let's look at using our complex filter setup with the load more component with the pagination option. We're going to be able to filter through this pagination. The pagination is going to update in real time and we're going to see this working live right here. We have our pagination element right up here, right next to our filters. And you can see that as I filter items in this list, our pagination element is updating in real time. So watch as I go and work through this filter, we are updating in real time. And I can go and play with this pagination with these options selected. I can remove options or change options and then filter through that list. Great. So this can be really powerful here. You can have this type of element inside your filter. You can have it on top of the list, on the bottom of the list. Uh, you can show as many items as you want. Right here we're showing four, but you can show 10, 20, 50, 100, doesn't matter. It's going to work. And this element is just going to update as needed. As the filters change, as the amount of items per page change, as your amount of collection items change, this is going to update with the amount of items that are there in real time. All right, let's go into Designer. Let's see how this works. We're in Designer. We're going to go over the pagination portion of this example. Now, if you've never used our filter component before, please check out example one, example two, example three. Uh, actually, definitely check out example five, the complex filter. You need to understand how this works before getting into this walkthrough. This walkthrough is just about pagination. We are under, if you're watching this and you are going to continue, you need to understand how this filter works first. Same with load more. Please go check out example one, two, or three. You need to understand this. This example is a combination of these two components. Great. Let's go over the specifics here. It is important to note that your collection list must have native Webflow pagination applied. We have their native pagination, but we're not using their native pagination. We only need a class on this next button. We have load more button. That's all we need from Webflow pagination. Great. Also, you're seeing it like this because I have super, whoa, oh my goodness. I have super zoom here, but just know that this is not broken. I'm just zooming in so you can see what's going on. Cool. All right, and now the ultra specific portion of this, the difficult part of this pagination add-on is applying this class, pagination container. You need this class on a blank div so that we can insert the pagination element into this div. And you can see in the live example here, this div is right up here, nothing inside of it. And we have this element centered. We are not building this element in designer. This is just a blank div. I have some how-to styles attached, but really the only thing we need here is the pagination container. You can see that I have vertical, uh, sorry, uh, display flex, align center, justify center. And that's going to keep that element centered inside this div. So we have our pagination container. That's an important class. Let's get into the custom code and see how this works. Let me go add that class back. Great. All right, let's get into the custom code. Here in custom code, I will scroll on down. And we should know that we are using the same instance here. This is very important. We have our variable projects grid a new instance of the FN Suite CMS library that's on our collection list class. This is the class of our collection list. This is being stored in a variable called projects grid. Projects grid is going to be used in both the filter component and in the load more component. We have projects grid being used as a variable here, projects grid filter. We also have it being used as a variable here, projects grid load more. This is how you have to do it if you are filtering 
with the load more. You cannot create two instances. This should not be two separate scripts. It needs to be part of the same thing. And look what we did here. We are separating filter component with the load more component. These are copy pasted direct from filter example one, filter example two, and load more example three. And the only difference is we're adding our paginate. Excellent. So look how paginate is contained here. We have the curly brackets open, the curly brackets close. It is surrounded with these commas. This is another option inside the load more component. This is not its own component. It's just an option. Uh, enable true, enable false option for our load more. All right, let's get into this. We have the load more button class. We went over that. We need to have that in native pagination. Next button. Next, we have our load all true. This is required for pagination to work. We must have all of our items loaded in the list so that the pagination can go grab those items and put it behind the pagination. Now let's get into the pagination. Pagination enable true. Great. Items per page, four. Look at what we did here. One, two, three, four. I think it's cool that we're able to update these right away and see everything that we can want to see. There's no scrolling here. If you want it to scroll, you can go ahead and do that. You can set this to eight, you can set it to 20, you can set it to 100, it doesn't matter. It's going to update here on the page, it's going to update this counter based on how many items there are per page. All automatic, you don't have to worry about it. The important insert pagination to our pagination container. Let's zoom in here so you have a little bit more clarity. Uh, pagination container, that's the class that we have applied to this div right here. It has the flex center center. That's going to center this element here. And that is what we're telling the library. Go ahead and insert pagination into this div. Next, we have some CSS styles. We have background color and background color active. Background color would be the background color of each of these boxes. You could see this is white FFF. We also have background color active. Whatever page is active, you can see gets a dark purple color. That dark purple, co dark purple color is background color active. Great. And then we can also set text color and text color active. So you can see we have this same purple for text color. Cool. And then on active, when that background turns to the purple, we want to change that text to white. So that's what we're doing right here with text color active. Then we have our border color, which is the border around the entire element. We are surrounding this element with a border. We have borders in between each page counter. And that's the border color that is going to be set here. So with these options, <clears throat> we are able to create the basic setup. You are able to create this view customized to your site with these options. Now, we understand that you may want a bit more customization here. Maybe you want a much bigger size pagination, a smaller one, a vertical one, whatever you want. <clears throat> we made sure to have a neat and organized class system so you can go in and start custom styling these pagination elements. There's going to be a separate video on this. Please go check it out. We're going to go through opening up Inspector, seeing what these classes are, and then going and applying these custom styles and writing a little bit of custom CSS. For now, these classes are right here waiting for you to go and interact with. If you have any questions about how any of this works, please check out our JavaScript service, sweetjs.io. Enjoy pagination. We're excited to see what you do with it. That's effing sweet.